Hello, and welcome to the Non-Consumptive Recreational Use Survey Results webinar. This webinar will walk viewers through the results of a study developed to understand non-consumptive recreational uses in the Mid-Atlantic region. This region captures New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia. The survey was conducted from July 5, 2017 to September 5, 2017. There are some direct connections between this study and tasks outlined in the Ocean Action Plan. Here is a list of the categories and direct actions that this work contributes to. As you can see, the main categories are outlined here as well as the actions that directly contribute as part of this research. A web-based survey was initiated to understand non-consumptive recreational use activities in the Mid-Atlantic region. 1,000 people participated in the study, with 962 respondents answering every question asked and 38 respondents answering some of the questions. The results of the survey will be provided in the next several slides. Responses that were the highest will be shown in dark red and bold. The second highest responses will be shown in red. This slide outlines where our state responses were received. So the state in which the participating uh, respondent had actually lived wi while they were taking the survey. We provided respondents with the definition of how we were defining non-consumptive recreational use activities. In this case, it is any non-hunting or non-extractive recreational use that provides an experience rather than a product, such as boating, whale watching, and birding. We then asked respondents to identify circumstances of them participating in these types of recreational activities. 21% of respondents indicated they participated in these activities when they were on vacation, with a close second and third response being on a day trip or within their local communities. Our next question asks respondents how far they would estimate they travel to participate in non-consumptive recreational use activities. We asked them to check more than one response if it applied. The number one response was less than five miles with a close second and third of more than 100 miles or 50 to 100 miles. Our next question asks respondents and we were trying to understand who the respondent was based on their associations and asked par participants if they were affiliated with any organization with an ocean-related mission. More than half, or 55%, indicated they were a member of an organization with an ocean-related mission. As you can see at the bottom of the slide, this directly connects to one of the Ocean Action Plans on under non-consumptive recreation to identify, characterize, and share information about measures to maintain the recreational value of important non-consumptive recreational areas. We categorized the organizations into their common themes. Surfrider was the number one organization named by respondents, followed by groups such as the Audubon Society. These categories continue, except now you can see the actual count of the respondents along with this percentage. We were interested to see how many people uh, recreating in the Mid-Atlantic states were using the Mid-Atlantic data portal. If a respondent answered no on the questionnaire, a website link was provided that would open up a new window and provide them information on the portal. This question directly links to Action 3 under the Data Portal section in the Ocean Action Plan about continuing to engage in agency outreach and public engagement to enhance data and por data portal functionality. To those respondents who answered yes to using the portal in the past, we then asked how often they used the tool. The majority of respondents, or 85%, indicated they had used the portal once a month or less. Reminding participants about the definition of non-consumptive recreational uses, we asked them to select up to three uses that they regularly participated in. 
For the remainder of this webinar, the top four uses will be shown. Other uses can be made available upon request. As you can see from the results, shore use, scenic natural views, paddling, and swimming were the four top chosen from this question. These are one ones that will be carried through as the top ranking selected by respondents, and the next series of slides will focus around these four uses. Based on a participant's responses to the previous question, they received a follow-up question asking how often they participated in each use that they identified. So if they identified all three, they were asked three times how often they participated in individual uses. In this case, this question is asking how often do participants participate in ensure use. From this results, you can see that the majority, or 37.66%, responded that they had recreated weekly, with a close second in and third in m monthly and seasonally. Scenic natural view activities was the second highest choice for participants and respondents of the survey, and when asked how often they participate in scenic natural view activities, again, you can see that it's a close sec first and second between weekly at 26.29% and monthly. When participants were asked how often they participate in paddling, which includes kayaking, canoeing, and stand-up paddleboarding, you see that the number one response is weekly at 33.43%, with a close second at seasonally at 28.49%. And when asked how often they participate in swimming, again, the first answer here, the first response was seasonally at 41.06% and weekly at 27.86%. Question nine was a big question, again, contingent upon how a respondent answered the question of their top three non-consumptive uses. This question aimed at understanding where they were participating in the recreational uses. We were looking for zip code level information and provided a website resource link to help identify area zip codes if they were unfamiliar with the area or if they did not know the information off the top of their heads. Here is a graphic view using a bar chart about the top two counties of all non-consumptive recreational activities. Here is a map view of the top two counties of all the non-consumptive recreational activities corresponding with the number of, of actual identified, the number of times they were identified. When respondents were asked specifically, where do you go to participate in shore uses, the top two responses were New York in Suffolk County and in New Jersey for Monmouth County. Here are the top five counties for shore uses. Again, Suffolk being number one, Monmouth County being number two, and then you have uh, number three at Cape May. In, in New Jersey, Ocean County in, in New Jersey, Nassau County in New York. Here's just another view of the same thing. Again, Suffolk County, New York is the number one answer with Monmouth County at, at a close second. When respondents were asked, where do you participate in scenic natural view activities, the number one response was Cape May County in New Jersey and Monmouth County as a close second in New Jersey as well. Here is the map view that shows that participation in scenic natural view activities for the top five counties that were selected. And here's a table view of the same thing showing the top five at the top and the rest towards the bottom. We have eliminated out some of the, the middle um, counties just for brevity of the webinar, but if anybody's interested in any of all of the responses of these, the survey, we're happy to provide that. 
We were then asked our respondents, where do you go to participate in paddling? Our top two counties, Ocean County, New Jersey, and Suffolk County, New York. And here's a map view of the same thing, indicating the top five counties for paddling. And here's a table view of paddling. Respondents were also asked, where do you go to participate in swimming? The number one response was Suffolk County, New York, and Ocean County, New Jersey. And here is a map view of the top five counties specifically related to swimming as a non-consumptive recreational use activity. And here is the table view. The next set of questions gets to what issues could impact a respondent's decision to participate in specific recreational uses. In this case, what negative issues would impact your decision specifically to go use shore use? Our top two responses, almost tied for number one, was litter trash on land at 10.44% and litter trash in the water at 10.35%. Other responses received included dogs, nuisance vehicles, beach erosion, bugs on the beach, and so on. Similarly, for scenic natural view activities, what negative issues would impact your decision to go do that recreational activity? In this case, again, litter trash on land and litter trash in the water were our top two responses. Litter trash on land at 12.15% and litter trash in the water at 11.35%. Other responses received included, again, dogs, beach erosion, and nuisance vehicles. For paddling, we again asked what negative issues would impact your decision to go use paddling as your recreational activity. The number one response for this question was water quality at 10.22%. Tied for second was litter trash in the water at 9.32% and access, re access restrictions. With other responses such as crime, lack of convenient kayak rental locations, and dangerous motorboats. When respondents were asked what negative issues would impact their decision to go use swimming, the number one response again was water quality at 11.56% and litter trash in the water as a close second at 11.09%. Some other responses included, again, crime, beach erosion, and no lifeguards. Continuing on with the respondent's decision to participate in a non-consumptive recreational use, respondents were asked if they observed activities that could negatively impact ocean and coastal resources. So as a non-consumptive recreational use user of the ocean and coastal resources, are there activities that you see others routinely participate in that you feel is or may become detrimental to ocean and coastal resources? This question directly connects to Action 1 under the Non-Consumptive Recreation in the Ocean Action Plan, which asks or identifies the topic of identifying, characterizing, and sharing information about measures to maintain the recreational value of important non-consumptive recreational areas. In this case, the majority of respondents, or 69.84%, responded yes, that they do routinely observe participation or otherwise that could be de detrimental to the ocean and coastal resources.
Here is a bar chart that outlines some of the activities as they have been identified through the survey. So littering on the coast and water, such as broken glass bottles, plastics, etc., was the number one answer. With motorboat, jet ski, golf carts, and personal vehicles or commercial vehicles on the beach was a close second. As well as fishing or overfishing. Here's the breakdown. So littering again was our number one response at 32.29%, with a close second of 23.87% with motorboats, jet skis, golf carts, and other personal vehicles. Here are some additional ones with their response rates as well. And some of these responses have actually been provided by the respondents. Our next question asked respondents what negative issues, circumstances interfered with respondents' overall enjoyment of participating in non-consumptive recreational use activities. The number one response was litter trash on land at 15.01%. The second response was litter trash in the water at 14.89%. And the third response was crowdedness at 14.04%. This question was connected to action one under the non-consumptive recreational activity category on the Ocean Action Plan, which again identify, characterize, and share information about measures to maintain the recreational value. Here are some additional responses. The number one response of other was restricted surfing or beach access. The next question asked in general, how often would you say you encounter these types of conflicts? Uh, with the number one response of sometimes at 61.33% and often at 20.20%. When respondents were asked if they've encountered conflicts during a specific period of time, you could see that the majority responded that they occasionally see it in certain periods of time, such as spring and fall as well as summer, a moderate amount, always summer leading the pack for that particular time period, and never would be um, for the winter. Here is a table view of the same thing. Again, you can see on the left-hand side is the uh, seasonality or the season of interest and then across the top there you have never rarely occasionally a moderate amount always and the total number of responses for each in this case spring was occasionally encountered for the summer a moderate amount for the fall occasionally for the winter rarely and for other would be never And here are some of the other responses. So during major holidays, at high seasons, peak season, after heavy rain. The next question asked what ocean and coastal uses respondents have heard about that could conflict with their engagement of recreational uses. In this case, the number one response was coastal housing or business development at 20.54%. Next response was offshore oil and gas drilling at 19.67%. This question directly connected to action one under the non-consumptive recreational category through the ocean action plan. When asked to identify your level of concern for each ocean and coastal use as it relates to a potential conflict with your recreational use activities of the ocean, coastal housing or business development, respondents were very concerned, as were offshore oil and gas drilling. Those are the top two responses from the previous question, with nearshore wind turbines and offshore wind turbines also of concern.
next question asks respondents, what entities do you trust to provide you with accurate information about ocean and coastal issues? The number one response was scientists at 20.47% and nonprofit organizations at 18.33%. Here's a bar chart of the same question. The next question asks respondents, what entities do you highly trust to take actions to protect recreational ocean and coastal uses? The number one response at 31.39% were nonprofit organizations. The second response at 23.93% for membership organizations that promote recreational uses. The next question asks respondents, if an ocean and coastal use was being considered that you might, that might conflict with the recreational use, how likely is it that you would attend a public meeting, sign a petition, spread the word to friends, use social media to voice my opinion, contact my local media, write a letter to an elected official, write a letter to a government agency, organize an event, or something other. The top two responses were to sign a petition and spread the word to friends. And you see that through the top under extremely likely. Here's a table view of the same question with the same responses. This question directly connects to the enhancement of participation in agency coordination as identified under the Ocean Action Plan. Some of the other responses received to what they might do would be attend an event, protest, join a group, email chain letters encouraging others to send, donate to a nonprofit, and research it for better understanding were some of the responses received. When respondents were asked, how much money do you estimate that you spend annually in your personal pursuit of non-consumptive recreational ocean and coastal uses? This includes supplies, travel costs, equipment, etc. The majority, or 34.63%, responded between $1,000 and $5,000 a year, with a second response between $500 and $1,000 a year at 20.15%. Of the money that you spend annually on non-consumptive recreational ocean and coastal uses, how much of it do you estimate is spent within 20 miles of the area where you most frequently recreate? 35.97% answered within 75, 75 to 90% of the time it's spent within 20 miles of the area that they most recreate. 27% of respondents responded that 50 to 75% of the time it is spent within 20 miles of the area where they most frequently recreate indicating that the money is spent closer to the places where they recreate. When asked to which racial or ethnic group do you most identify, the majority of respondents, or 85.19%, said that they were Caucasian and non-Hispanic, with 10% 10.37% preferring not to respond. Respondents were also then asked, would you be willing to be contacted with further questions related to the subjects of non-consumptive recreational uses? The majority, or 51.04%, responded yes. 
The next question asks, would you be willing to attend an evening meeting in your state that is designed to provide more information to state and federal officials about non-consumptive recreational ocean uses in your area? 65.66% responded yes. This information was followed up by providing contact information in which we could contact them for future uh, events. The next question indicated that the Mid-Atlantic States, through Marco and Partners, are hosting meetings in the fall 2017 that will take place in the five Mid-Atlantic States, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, and Virginia. These meetings will seek to gather input from non-consumptive recreational users about policies they would like to see in place to protect ocean and coastal resources. We ask them to please tell us what types of policies they feel should be discussed at the workshops. The number one response at 23.63% was enforcement policy for violations of coastal and ocean protection laws, with second at 21.47% at endangered species management. These directly connect to the topic of enhancing, enhancing participation in agency coordination under the Ocean Action Plan. Here are some other alternatives that were indicated through the policies that, that respondents would like to be discussed at workshops. Thank you for listening into the webinar about the Non-Consumptive Recreational Use Survey.